Disney Pixar Toy Story 4 Movie Story Book Many many years ago one of Andy's toy was left out in the rain Bo Peep and Woody worked together to save the toy but when Woody tried to get back into the house he was shocked to see Andy's mom putting Bo in a box Sadly Andy's little sister Molly did not want bo any more woody tried to convince bo to stay with him and the other toys but her mind was made up it's time for the next kid she said bo wanted woody to come with her but at that moment he heard andy calling for him woody knew he could not leave his kid So the two toys said goodbye. Sometime later, Andy outgrew his toys and gave them to an imaginative little girl named Bonnie. Bonnie took Woody, Buzz, and their friends on lots of new and exciting adventures, but Woody eventually found himself being played with less and less. One morning Woody heard Bonnie's dad say it was almost time to leave for kindergarten orientation. Bonnie was nervous. So Woody jumped into her backpack to keep an eye on her. Teacher asked the class to work on a craft project while Bonnie was working some of the art supplies at her table spilled into a trash can. Woody watched as Bonnie's eye filled with tears. He climbed out of her backpack and removed the art supplies from the garbage. Woody slipped them and some other items onto the table and then jumped back into the bag. Bonnie happily picked up a spork and glued a pair of eyes on it. Then she added arms, legs and few more touches. She was proud of her work. She named the spork Forky. Bonnie put Forky into her backpack. To Woody's surprise, the googly-eyed art sir project came to life. Back at home, Woody introduced a nervous Forky to Bonnie's other toys. Woody's friend were not sure about Forky they had never seen a toy like him Woody said Forky was very important to Bonnie right now so they all had to protect him however Forky had an habit of jumping into the trash Woody would have to keep a close eye on him Since kindergarten did not start for another week, Bonnie's family decided to take a road trip. Woody, Forky, and the other toys were packed up and loaded into an RV. At every stop, Forky tried to climb into the trash. Woody spent all his time chasing Forky and dragging him back to the RV. By the end of the day Woody was exhausted. But Forky was not done. The second Bunny was asleep, the spork slipped away. I'm not a toy, I'm a spork, he said as he made his escape. Freedom! And then he jumped out of the RV window. Woody was shocked. He knew he had to go after him. I will see you at the RV park, he told the other toys. Then Woody jumped and took off down the dimly lit highway. The cowboy soon found Forky. As he dragged the spork towards the RV park, he tried to get Forky to understand. how important he was to bony like it or not you are a toy said woody you have to be there for bony 
He explained that Boney loved Forky the same way Forky loved Thrash. I get it now, said Forky. I am Boney, Thrash. Suddenly the spork started running. Woody, we got to get going, he said. She needs me. As Woody and Forky neared the RV park, they passed the second chance antique store where something caught Woody's eyes. It was the lamp that had once belonged to his old friend Bo Peep. He had not seen Bo in years. Forky wanted to keep moving, but Woody needed to see if Bo was in the shop. He picked up the spork and climbed through the mail slot. Woody found no sign of Bo or her sheep in the shop. But when Woody and Forky were leaving, they met a doll named Gabby Gabby and her friend Benson and Vetriloquist Tummy. Woody explained that he was looking for Bo Peep. Gabby Gabby listened politely, but she could not take her eyes off his pull string. It looked exactly like her. Gabby Gabby agreed to help Woody find Bo Peep. We will take you to her, she said. As they went through the store, Gabby Gabby told Woody that her record was fine, but the voice box for her pull string had always been broken. She wondered aloud if Woody's voice box would fit her. Woody was nervous. We got to go, he whispered to Forky. You can't leave, said Gabby Gabby. You have what I need. Woody and Forky were quickly surrounded by more of Doll's friends. Woody dashed into an aisle just as Forky was grabbed. The quick-thinking cowboy saw a little girl coming. He pulled the string on his voice box and dropped to the floor. The store owner's granddaughter, Harmony, picked up Woody. She smiled and whisked him off to the playground. Woody had no choice but to leave Forky behind. At the playground, Woody tried to sneak off to rescue Forky, but before he could get away, a bus full of campers arrived. The kids grabbed the toys and ran around the playground. Woody froze just before a girl saw him and snatched him up. She introduced Woody to another toy. Amazingly, it was Bo Peep. When the girl was not looking, the two friends ran for cover behind some bushes. Woody was sorry to hear that Bo did not have a kid anymore. She was a lost toy now, but she said she loved it. As they caught up, Bo's skunkmobile appeared, driven by her loyal sheep, Billy, Goat and Gruff. Bo introduced Woody to a tiny pet detective named Giggle Mac Dimples. Woody asked Bo and Giggles to help him save Forky. Boney needed him, but Bo and Giggle never wanted to go back to the antique store. It had taken them years to escape that place. Woody reminded Bo of Molly, the girl who had loved her for so many years. Finally, Bo was convinced. In the antique shop, Cabby Cabby had taken Fork to her cabinet and asked him to tell her everything about his friend Woody. When Harmony returned from the park, Gabby Gabby watched the little girl pull out her tea set. The doll mimicked every move Harmony made. In Gabby's Gabby's mind, Harmony was the perfect little girl. All the doll wanted was to belong to Harmony and only one thing stood in her way. When my voice box is fixed, I will finally get my chance, said Gabby Gabby. 
That morning, Buzz had left the RV in search of Woody and Fork. But a carnival game booth operator found him instead. Buzz was immediately strapped to the prize wall of the Star Adventure booth behind two plush toys, Ducky and Bunny. They were not happy about Buzz had taken their top prize spot. Ducky kicked at Buzz, but the space ranger closed his helmet on Ducky's foot. As the toys struggled, they all fell for the prize wall. Put us back up there, demanded Bunny. But Buzz was already on the move. Bo led the toys through the carnival toward the antique store. On the roof, Bo and the toys met up with Buzz, who was followed closely by Ducky and Bunny. Bo and Woody explained their mission and everyone agreed to work together to save Forky. Okay guys, playtime is over, said Bo, crouching by an opening on the roof of the store. You have to follow my lead. Back at the RV, the toys realized that Bonnie's dad was about to start driving away. They had to stop him. They could not leave Woody, Buzz and Forky behind. Pop went a tire. We are not going anywhere, Jessie told her friends, holding up a nail. If you get my point. Inside the store, Bo, Buzz and Woody saw that they had to cross an open aisle to save Forky. They also had to watch out for Dragon, the vicious cat who lived in the shop. Suddenly, Boney and her mom came in. Woody acted quickly. He started to run into the aisle, but Bo pulled him back. Benson had spotted Woody and started closing in. Thankfully, Bo's ship took a bite out of Benson which sent him running with the sheep. Now Gabby Gabby had the sheep and Forky. Bo had another plan. She went looking for a toy named Duck Kabom. He was Canada's greatest stuntman. When they found him, Bo explained that Forky and her ship were being held up by Gabby Gabby. To rescue them, she needed the daredevil to jump over the aisle to Gabby's Gabby's cabinet. But Duck had not attempted a jump in years. Not said Duke. Nah, uh negative. As Woody explained how important Forky was to his kid, Duke got shocked up. Years before, Duke had had a kid named Regan. But the stuntman had not been able to jump like the toy in the TV commercial. So Regan had given him away. Forget your commercial, said Bo. Be the Duke. You are right now. The one who jumps and crashes. Duke finally agreed to help. While the toys prepared for Duke's jump, Woody praised Bo. You have handled this. Lost toy life better than I could, he said. Finally, the mission was underway. Woody climbed onto the motorcycle behind Duke. The stuntman sped off, but then he thought of region and lost control. Woody jumped off the bike and grabbed the cabinet just as Duke crashed to the floor. Woody soon found Forky and ran, but Gabby's Gabby's friend grabbed his pull string. In the mayhem, Woody lost Forky, fell off the cabinet and landed on top of Dragon. The rest of the toys, except for Forky, grabbed the string attached to Woody. Duke reared past Dragon on his motorcycle. The cat chased the daredevil through the store.
dragging the rest of the toys outside Woody wanted to go back for Forky but no one wanted to go with him Open your eyes Woody said Bo there is plenty of kids out there it can't be just about the one you are still clinging to it's called loyalty snapped Woody something a lost toy would not understand Bo left for the carnival while Buzz returned to the RV once again Woody was on his own when Woody went back into the antique store he thought he have to fight for Forky but Gabby Gabby just wanted to talk I was detective right out of the box she said she could only imagine how wonderful it was for Woody to have spent too much time with Andy and Bonnie Woody and Gabby reached an agreement Woody would give Gabby Gabby his voice box and in return she would let Forky go moments later it was finally Gabby's Gabby's chance Harmony found Gabby Gabby and pulled her string Let's be best friends the doll said with her new voice box Harmony stared at Gabby Gabby then tossed her into an old crate too creepy she said Woody was shocked just then Bonnie returned to the store to get the backpack she had left there Woody told Forky to go with Bonnie and to tell the other toys to get the RV to the carnival where he would meet them then the cowboy went back to help Gabby Gabby Woody told Gabby Gabby that harmony was not her only chance at a good life he would take her to his kid pony a friend once told me there are plenty of kids out there he said and one of them is named boni she is waiting for you right now she just does not know it yet just then bo appeared she had returned to the store to help woody woody and bo caught up with rest of the toys but they needed to find a quick way to get the rv on the other side of the carnival bo and woody convinced duke that he could jump from ferris wheel to the star adventure booth i can do this he said yes you can canada replied woody seconds later canada's greatest stuntman flew through the air and landed on the roof of the booth the rest of the toys quickly followed on a zip line the toys raced to the carousel but as they got close gabby gabby noticed a lost girl Woody could see how much Gabby Gabby wanted to help her. I think I can be there for her, said Gabby Gabby. This is my chance. The toys devised a new plan to get the girl to notice the doll. I'm Gabby Gabby. Will you be my friend? she said in her recorded voice. The girl picked up Gabby Gabby and hugged her tight. Are you lost too? she asked. I will help you. Just then a security guard came along and reunited the girl with her parents. Gabby Gabby finally got her kid. Woody and Bo met up with Bonnie's toys at the RV. The toys were happy to see them and Woody was even happier to see Forky with Bonnie again. He had done the job he did set out to do. Woody realized that There were other kids and toys all over who needed his help and wherever he went he would always have friends by his side the end